My name is Kayla Wilson. I go to Northeast School of Arts um, for creative writing and is housed by Robert E. Lee. And I am uh, going to be a senior this year. <laughs> I'm Frederick Williams, executive editor of Prosperity Publications, former uh, professor at UTSA in the African American Studies Department, and also I taught at SAC, San Antonio College, and Northwest Vista College. Who exactly was Julian Bond? Julian Bond was one of the original members of a group called Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC. Julian Bond, at the age, I believe, of about 20, when he was a student at Morehouse College, told his father that he was going to drop out of college and join in the civil rights movement, being influenced by Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. There were a number of young uh, men at that time that did the same thing because it was a generation that was now saying, we're not going to accept segregation. We're not going to accept being second-class citizens, and we're willing to put our life on the line and also our education on the line because a lot of these young men got were kicked out of school because they got involved in the civil rights movement. Yeah, well, when you really think about it, we, we could go back to the uh, 16th Street Church bombing in Birmingham, Alabama in September of 1963 when they put the bombs in the church to go off during Sunday school and we lost four beautiful little girls. I think everyone at that time was pretty much getting sick and tired of what was happening. And then we can even go back further to Emmett Till in 1955 when he was, he said the wrong words to a white woman in Money, Mississippi, and the, the husband and the woman's uh, brother came and got him that night and took him out and, and, and murdered him. Uh, it was a lynching. And what happened is when he pulled his body out of the river, his mother, Mimi Till, asked the officials in Mississippi to give her the body for a uh, 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 a service in Chicago. Well, they asked her to make sure that they didn't open the casket. She agreed. But as soon as she got the body in Chicago, she said, no, I'm going to open it. I want the world to see how vicious these people are. And so they opened up the casket, and they, they saw, and we all saw, I saw, as a young, young kid, and we all were angry. I was up north uh, living up in Michigan, and we were very angry as young young kids. And so then, and he, was a he was 15 he years old. He was 15 years old when he was murdered. And then later on that year, we had Rosa Parks refusing to give up her seat on the bus. And she makes, I think, what's become a classic statement, why do you treat us all like this? And of course, and that brings in Dr. King with the Montgomery bus boycott. Right. And the next big thing is the students in Greensboro, North Carolina sitting at the counter, refusing to get up. And if you saw the movie, The, the uh, Butler, I believe, was it The Butler? Yes. You saw scenes yes. that, that were, yes. were similar to what was happening in, uh, in North Carolina. That brings about the students deciding to organize and start an organization, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC. John Lewis is probably one of the bravest men that this country has ever known. He dropped out of school and, and joined SNCC and led all these marches. And John Lewis got beat very badly. Um, he was really a disciple, I believe, of Dr. King, and he now is serving in, in the Congress. But he was very close to Julian Bond. Mm -hmm. They ran against each other for Congress in, uh, in the 1970s in the, for the district that, that John Lewis now holds. He, he beat Julian Bond. But Julian Baum was one of those young boys, idealistic, who believed that there was no reason why we shouldn't be treated like every other American in this country. And it was a generation said, we're not taking it anymore, that's it. We're, we're, we're willing to, to sacrifice our life to make a change and sacrifice our education. And that's what Julian Bond, I'll say, uh, Marion Barry used to be the mayor of of uh, Washington, D.C., John Lewis, and a lot of other, Diane Nash, 
was right. just really sensational. Uh, that's what they all did back then, and, and they, they, they did it because they had something to believe in. And, and I like to, like to kind of compare it to you. Right. Kayla, you would have been one of those students that would have done that because of what you're doing over at, at Robert E. Lee. You have the courage to say what is right to you and not back down. And so you're the modern day not Diane Nash. Yeah, and, and, and Julian Bond and um, the rest of those people started started um, their movement at a young age, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And Not much older than you. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, why do you think that's so important to our, our, like, my generation, the younger generation today? Oh, I think it's so important to you all because I believe you're getting the, the, the major media outlets in this country are determined to control how you think and what you think and what you see in terms of your race and your heritage and your history and your culture. They're giving you programs like Empire. They're giving you programs like um, Scandal. There's nothing positive about these shows. Absolutely nothing positive about, about these shows. So if that's what you're getting, and you're not getting in your schools, you're not getting Julian Bond in your schools. Uh, you'll get Dr. King. How can you not get Dr. King? I mean, he's you know, yeah. larger than life. Uh, but you're not getting the, the foot soldiers. And so when I, when I go on Facebook, sometimes I get depressed because I hear young girls talking about Olivia, mm -hmm. Olivia Pope, is it, in Scandal. Right. And not Ida B. Wells or not Ella Baker or not Fannie New Hamer. These are, these are black women that stood up and had the courage to fight so that you could be who you are. Right. You, 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 you young people, I, I don't think that you should have to have gone through what they did, but sometimes I think it might be good. It, it, it might be good so you'll realize that you're not quite where you think you are in this country. But I think that's what we're seeing now, is you all are discovering, as these police brutally attack young people, that... You're not there where you where where you want to be, and so Black Lives Matter is just a continuation of SNCC and what um, what uh, John Lewis and Julian uh, did Julian Bond did back in the '60s. We're still fighting. We're still fighting. There's there's no reason why you should have to tell a school board this is offensive to me. How dare you have a school named after a man that fought to keep my ancestors as slaves? You shouldn't have to do that. And that's what they were saying back then. How dare you tell me I have to ride on the back of a bus? How dare you tell me I can't sit at this counter? How dare you do that? What gives you the right to do that? Who do you think you are? Right. And they challenged it. And, and, and they won. They, to a certain degree, they won. They won social equality. Now the big battle is economic equality. But that's what Julian Bond represents. I had the opportunity to meet and talk with Julian Bond because what, what Julian Bond and those guys, and Dr. King did, is they opened the door for many of us to walk in. And one of the big areas where we needed to be was the public policy making in Washington, D.C. And you found senators like Senator Birch Bayh, who I worked for, and Senator Edward Kennedy began to hire uh, black uh, right. legislative aides and staffers because we were right in, I was right in the meetings where decisions were being made. And so as a result, I was the liaison from the senator's office to black leadership. So I met with Julian Bond, Jesse Jackson, Ben Hooks, and um, Vernon Jordan, all those leaders. And again, because by if they want something done on Capitol Hill, they would come to Senator By to get it done. But it opened that door, and now you'll see even more black staffers on Capitol Hill. And it all goes back to Julian Bond and those young guys standing up and saying, no more, we're going to change this. And it was a very courageous act for them to do. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and you said that you had met Julian Bond um, when was the first time you met him? Oh, let's see. I went to work for Senator Birch Bay in 1977. I, I met Julian when, when um, President Carter nominated Griffin to be Attorney General. And Griffin 
had was from Georgia also and had belonged to some uh, segregated clubs. And so all the leadership, were, they were opposing Griffin and they're coming to Senator Biden to try to get him to bring up the issue. And among that group was Julian Bond one time. I met Julian Bond, well, I continued to know Julian Bond in 78 when Coretta Scott King came to uh, Senator Kennedy's office and, and Senator By and asked the two senators would they introduce uh, the Martin Luther King legislation on the Senate side to try to get it moving to make it a holiday. And they agreed to, and so it was my job and a great concern of mine, Peter Parham was a black staffer for Kennedy. We ran, we put together the whole hearing. And of course, putting together the whole hearing, we had to strategize with Julian, with Credit Scott King, uh, Congressman John Conyers, and how we're gonna get this bill passed. So that's an, another time. And then of course, when we would, after we hold the hearings, then Credit Scott King, we know we have to reach the public. And so that's when we had the meeting, uh, brought Stevie Wonder in. And I know you heard the song, Happy Birthday to You. He wrote that to King. And every year we'd have this major uh, gathering on the, on the mall in Washington, D.C. And so we would all be there. And then I think, uh, so I, I was invited to Ebenezer Baptist Church in, when was it? I think it was right after we had introduced the legislation. They asked Peter and I to come down and speak at the church about how the legislation was moving through the Congress. And so I, I saw him at that time also. So I had the opportunity to speak at the church where Dr. King was a minister. So that, that's when, those are the times I saw him. I, I was close to Marion Barry. I did a lot with Marion Barry in DC. And I almost went to work for John Lewis when he became a congressman, but I decided to get out of, out of Congress and do something different. So Julian was very determined, very articulate, and very radical very radical. So those are the times that my dealings with Julian Bond as part of the right. bigger picture dealing with all the leadership. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I know he is not mentioned that much in our history books. Um, I, I, I can admit I haven't heard of him that much. What do you think is the most important thing from what he's done in his lifetime that um, like we should um, learn from? What do you think? His courage. His courage? His courage, his determination, and his commitment to what's right. His moral and ethical values Those are the things that, that I wish more of our young kids could grab on and latch on to that. Um, the example would be his opposition to the Vietnam War. He came out very early and opposed the war. In fact, he, he won a seat in the Georgia State Legislature, and they wouldn't let him take a seat because he had opposed the Vietnam War. And, and uh, he wasn't a friend of, I, you know, I don't want to knock uh, President Johnson because I think Lyndon Johnson was one of the best friends as a president that black people ever had. He gave us the Civil Rights Bill and the Voting Rights Act and also fair housing. But if you cross Lyndon Johnson, I mean, he was not the kind of man you want to cross. And, uh, and so I think Lyndon had something to do with him not getting his seat. In, in the Georgia State Legislature, but that's the kind of principal person he was. Uh, I have I have one fault, one problem with Julian. Uh, be honest with you, you know, no one's a saint, so I remember he opposed Shirley Chisholm when she was running for president, and I thought that, that was, in fact, he spoke out against her, and I, I didn't, That that's one of the flaws, I believe. If I was writing his history, I would write it as being one of the flaws. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, in one of Julian Bond's last speeches, he um, says, we must practice dissent. How can young people today um, take away from that? Take away um, from what? From the quote, um, we, we must practice dissent. We must practice dissent? Yes. Dissent. 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 You, it, 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 that goes to my old boss, Senator Birch, by saying, he'd tell us all the time, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. If you don't squeak, you're not going to get greased. Dissent is squeaking. Dissent is saying, I'm opposed to this, this is wrong, and we're going to change it. 
So we always, I don't think you should live your life looking for reasons mm -hmm. to be opposed to something. But when you see it, and I don't care what it is, uh, and I, I, I'm of, I'm of Julius, Julian Bond's generation, and I do that now. Uh, I make a loud noise. I don't like empire. I don't think empire is a good image of black people. I don't like scandal. I don't think she gives a good image for, for young black girls to follow. And, and, and I speak out. I dissent. And I'm following what he said. Make a noise. Because if you don't make a noise, it'll never change. Right. And they'll keep doing it the way they want to do it. And now, it's, it could be a lonely, lonely um, way to go, as you're probably finding out with your dissent right now. It could be very lonely. And you have to be very strong. You have to be very determined uh, uh, to continue. But in the long run, it'll pay off for you. And I think that's the point he was making. Uh, young people need to dissent. And it's interesting. I'm glad he lived long enough to start to see you young people taking some of his uh, advice with Black Lives Matter. So That's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank okay. you so much. Um, okay. I, I think I learned a lot from you um, about Julian Bond because, of course, um, you know, in my history classes, we don't talk about him that much, but mm -hmm. I, I'm glad that I, I got to speak to you about him. So, thank you very much. My pleasure. Very I'm much. happy to do it. <laughs> that was great.